typical view of ethnographic filmmaking is that it is a method combining ethnography with filmmaking in a cultural location traditionally mediated by anthropologists. But as small-scale societies recede and transform, digital hardware democratizes film production, and contemporary television uses traditional people in exotic locations for spectacular results, ethnographic filmmakers continue to argue for a disciplinary identity. Not inside academic anthropology, nor an industry in its own right, film ethnography remains virtually homeless as it conducts important explorations of the boundaries of anthropology. Ethnographic film has its celebrities, its working models of representation, as well as its debates about authorship and how the films should be seen. What practice do we do in the cave? Any practice according to Guru Rinpoche's preaching. Loosely chronological, from innocence to self-consciousness, this film remakes these debates. What filmmakers influence ethnographic filmmaking? Ted Carpenter, John Marshall, and Robert Gardner were some, they sort of set the, the stage and did the initial big films in the post-World War II era. The thing you have is a window. It's called a, a, a movie camera or a video camera, and it's a window, right? And it, 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 it moves around, and there's a very few little rules. We met and talked with Kong people from 23 separate bands. I don't understand how this equipment works. Kerawari, uh, November 20th, 1969. Nor along with distortion should we be afraid of a certain amount of mystery. It was possible with the greatest of ease, with just an outboard motor uh, and a dugout, to go right up into prehistory. Thinking about this moment in the 50s and the 60s of going out and capturing all these uh, dying uh, transient cultures on their, on their last legs, was, it becomes logically impossible at a certain point. You know, you, what are you going to have, some gargantuan monde imaginaire with like every image of these, not first contact, but last contact, you know? I mean, it, 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 it is not realizable in the end. That's not to say that it shouldn't be attempted. Do I observe or participate while shooting the film? I think that the observational style we were training, I mean, is a, not everyone agrees with that as a, as a film aesthetic or methodology, but for, for training students to observe and be patient and humble and respectful of people they're working with, it's a very, very good place to start. Observational filmmakers should adopt a stance of humility before the world. I think that the anthropologist may not be all that important to be a part of the scene. I present to the world as much as possible as the protagonist sees it. How do you discover the story and the turmoil of real life while it's happening all around you? In Siberia, the film that we made among the Siberian Eskimos and the Chukchi is observational also. We will have uh, access to their uh, various activities yeah. and uh, they should not look at the camera. <laughs> Zomo herds produce butter, which is sold. Butter is used every day in food and in ritual. I looked at ethnographic film as a fairly scientific undertaking. There's nothing scientific about it. Until I learned better. Try directing an alligator. The biggest problem is in the shooting to be open. When you go, you go in with an idea of how it should be, you go in with the knowledge that you have ahead of time, and but you're also trying to explore, trying to discover. Oh God, those bloody alligators. It seems like there is in picture making something that has something like uh, this shock of authenticity. So what are the complications of making representations of other people? 
Once they understood that they could see their soul, their image, their identity outside of themselves, they were startled. One man wore a photograph of himself on his forehead. Friends greeted him by examining his photograph. I'm contaminated by the fact that I've had to look at the mirror and, and sometimes glimpses through the mirror. If you make a narrative construction of about the people, that becomes more real than they are and, and more widely disseminated. If you show the hunters and you don't show Nye or you don't show some of the update films, people think that it's just like the gods must be crazy. The myth presented in, in the ethnographic present of a particular film, it's there 50 years later. As an ethnographer, camera person, and editor, am I an author of a story? Anthropologists tell certain kinds of stories, that there's certain kind of narratives that are very characteristic of, of anthropology. Now when I think about films, I, I think it's also quite useful to think of it also in terms of theatre, I mean in, in the sense of um, classical approaches to theatre, that is you have to have characters, you have to have stories and you have to have events. Authorship does result in very individual looks to things. And indeed any films in a certain sense are profoundly personal authored films. It could get it to be more interesting as an object in the end uh, if you include yourself. So I'm putting you in the frame now. Like absolutely even in interviews. Yeah, yeah. I'm like Bring it back, dude. Let's, let's <laughs> add another subject to the piece. Yeah. But your films aren't just about yourself. People had to face the fact that there was a complex relationship between uh, the photographic representations and what the representations showed you. But we got more self-conscious. <laughs> The whole self-other dichotomy is a completely spurious dichotomy because they only exist in relationship to each other in some intersubjective space of engagement. The entire society could be put on a screen before them, detached from them. They could watch themselves. No one who ever comes to know himself with the detachment of an observer is ever the same again. So here we need the support from the international uh, non-governmental non organization. But doesn't the camera change the ethnographic legitimacy of the event? And if so, shouldn't I be frank with my audience and just show myself in the frame? You know, I don't think people can be unaware of something like a camera in their face. Do you think what's so, more important is what's behind the lens? Well, that's what I think the films of the 50s were made with naive realist um, assumptions and that during the 60s, 70s, those were shed. Whether um, having a camera and having making a film influences the situation so much that it's no longer an authentic situation. And I think the way to look at it is First, the time is linear, and any moment that you're photographing is as real as any other moment. It's like the gravitational field. Space itself is warped and shaped by the objects in it. Sometimes reflexivity in this sense, sort of capital R reflexivity, tied to the same positivist epistemology that it's nominally criticizing. You take a picture of you taking a picture of me, and then you take a picture of me being taken a picture of by you, and you go back and forth like this. I mean, it's a, it's a limitless regress. You can put the filmmaker in the picture, but then can you put the filmmaker filming in the picture? And you can just go back and back and back. There is no, there is no prima mobile at the beginning of the line, right? And what are we doing as a discipline? We are navel staring, we are writing about ourselves, so we are writing about our big toe. Okay, so what question should I ask myself when editing my film? How do you convey in the film those decisions that are being made in the editing room? Because that's something that's always left out of it. Where is the graveyard of all these films you made? What will remain on the cutting room floor? Where do the elephants go to die? To kill your own baby, as we used to say, is very difficult for someone who has never made film, you see. In the editing stage, it seems to me you're given another opportunity to sort of think about your experience as an observer and to reorder all of these feelings and impressions. Now, I am writing culture too, but in what ways are my moving pictures different from my articles? 
writing a text and doing a film are almost two opposed processes. In other words, when you're writing a text or when you're developing something anthropologically, you're starting from a point and you're opening up. With a film, in a way, you start with a lot and you converge on a point. So in a way, the process is completely opposite. There is a fable told by a mountain people living in the ancient highlands of New Guinea about a race between a snake and a bird. It tells of a contest which decided if men would be like birds and die, or be like snakes which shed their skins and have eternal life. The bird won, and from that time, all men, like birds, must die. If, let's say, we take and look at that animal and birds can, and see what the enormous lions have to and to look at Forest of Bliss, you see, you see exactly this abandonment. And this is, for me, strange as I think about it, because I probably even still harbor more respect for words than I do for images. <laughs> I had been to Benares enough times and had watched this and to know what it was in the scene that I was interested in. And I was very consciously making an effort to include certain things and to exclude other things, which is nothing more than the business of being a filmmaker. It's almost linguistic in its orchestration, in its precision and in its assurance and in the interweaving of different narrative threads and its construction of syntagmatic chains, even as it renounces literal language, so to speak. I see a pursuit of knowledge that is very different from what is, from that to which written anthropologists are at all receptive, um, but is much closer to human experience itself. Simply, what is visual anthropology then? If you're going to define anthropological film, you have to define what anthropology is first. And there's no such thing as anthropology with a capital A. There are anthropologies that vary in time and in space. It is other understandings of anthropology which segregate certain kinds of mm. film. If you can afford a, a, a two thousand pound camera and a two or three thousand pound editing rig, uh, you're in business. So it's it's really really cheap, and cheap means democratic, and democratic means more creative people with something to say will get a chance. In some way, democracy speaks about honoring others, honoring difference, but in fact it works dramatically towards making sameness. Now, who will see the films and where they'll be seen is another issue. I think you'll see further market segmentation so that film will become a more a, a personal and private medium. You make a film for a, a, a few dozen friends and colleagues or your extended family or your village or your ethnic group um, rather than aiming at mass audiences. So, you know, we're going from broadcasting to narrow casting again. What about TV? I mean, when I think of 30 years ago, the way we imagined that we would change the whole world with film, well, it hasn't happened, it is not going to happen in our time. Isn't that a contradiction between what you said earlier, that uh, media do transform culture? So why They would... do, and they're transforming it in their own way. We haven't harnessed them. We might as well stop the ocean out here. I don't think it's been all bad that there aren't any more visual anthropologists. I, I, I honestly think that it hasn't meant the death of this kind of filmmaking at all, that it's not happening within the profession. In fact, it may be healthier outside the profession than it ever was inside the profession. And I don't, as a matter of fact, feel it ever was inside the profession. Do you think you can do ethnographic film MTV style? No, I don't think so. <laughs> We're to get a little bit scared.
jungle, there are places where the pure African form of the religion is still practiced by tribes such as the Babongo. That's where I want to go. I'm about to be initiated by a shaman from the Babongo tribe. Just my body's telling me there's something pretty serious going on inside me. 